inspired on Liberty Radio. The field is wasted, the land mourns, for the grain is ruined, the new wine is dried up, the oil fails. Today the same story repeats itself. The earth is found to be in mourning. With the pandemic, war, and natural disasters. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. The present times reflect the need for a sacred assembly. An alarm to echo the urgency of seeking for the salvation of the soul. This Wednesday, we shall have a sacred assembly, tagged the Wednesday of Humility, in the Night of the Soul. The sackcloth in the times of the Bible was when, when someone would tear their clothing, put sackcloth on, it was a sign of humility before God, of saying, I repent of what I've done. As we are preparing for the fast of Daniel, we are going to be sanctifying ourselves. Remember to bring your sackcloth as the sign of our humility before God. At 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4, 3NX or at any universal church near you. A very good evening to all of you. May God bless you abundantly in the name of the Lord Jesus. As you saw there in that brief video, tomorrow will be a very, very special day. And one of the things we explained here in the service, I was talking about this yesterday, is that we saw in the Bible how there is a difference between one person coming to God in sackcloth, in humility, and something very different from this is when a group of people, a nation, comes together before God in sackcloth and humility. One of the reasons why, after 400 years, God came down to deliver His people from slavery in Egypt and sent a deliverer is because He said, I heard the groaning, the cry out of my people. Now it was different because there weren't two or three people crying out to God, humbling themselves before God. It was the whole group of the people of Israel who were enslaved, who now were calling upon God together. And I believe tomorrow, as the night of humility, where we will be wearing sackcloth, as this will be done all over the world, in the Temple of Solomon, in our church here in the UK, all over the world, I see tomorrow as the moment where the people of Israel collectively came to God with humility and God had no option but to attend to them, to deliver them and to forgive their sins. And please understand when we say that God had no option, it's not because God is obligated to do anything, but the Bible says that God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. When we come to Him in humility, there is grace, there is forgiveness. Well, tonight we want to share something very special with you. We're going to continue dissecting verses from John 17. But first, we're going to play here a song that speaks about repentance. In the meantime, you can contact your, your friends, your colleagues from the church, your uh, friends who serve God together with you for them to connect. And after, a little bit later on, 
we're going to ask you to call into the program if you want. Don't call just yet because you'll need to know why we're asking you to call. But let's now enjoy this beautiful song. We're going to come back in a moment to understand something very specific that the Lord Jesus spoke in John 17. <laughs> Very well, I have my Bible here open in John 17. I hope that you have yours ready there as well. We have um, a lot of people here connected. Pastor Joseph, we yes, have here. Well, today we have a lot of people from Croydon because Pastor Gladson is here. And he probably told everyone that to connect, <laughs> right? Just because he's here. But we have people here from Brixton, Ilford, Pastor Joseph. Croydon again, Glasgow. We have here, so from Peckham, we have from Peterborough, we have here from Croydon again, Peterborough. You can hold that in your hands, Pastor yes. Joseph. Uh, we have Hackney, Brixton, Fisbury Park. Um, we have Newcastle, Nottingham, okay. Swindon. Uh, we have uh, Gravesend, Manchester. All right, okay. We, we have, we're very glad that you're connected with us. Now, 
we're going to read today, uh, we're going to read a couple of verses that will help us understand the importance of the greatest legacy that the Lord Jesus left for us, that is the Holy Spirit. So John 17, 12 says like this, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. The beginning of this verse is key. Jesus says, while I was with them in the world. When the Lord Jesus was here in the world, He protected His disciples. He guided, He led His disciples. Whenever His disciples needed counsel, inspiration, He was there. They didn't need to worry about <clears throat> what you know if they if they were a little bit lost what am i going to do they knew what they were going to do because they had the source with them that was the lord jesus and anything they would go to him the master and they would ask and they did so many times the bible shows us this but it's important to understand that he said at the beginning of this verse he said while i was in the world now the Lord Jesus was going to the cross, He was leaving the world, the circumstances were going to change. And then the following verse says, But now I come to you, He was saying to the Father, I'm going to you. And these things, I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So Jesus said, now I come to you, but now your joy needs to be fulfilled in themselves. So Jesus was saying, now that I'm leaving this world, your joy, that is the joy of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the fast of Daniel that we're going to start on Monday is called the fast for complete joy. He, Jesus was saying, now that I'm leaving, while, while I was in the world, Jesus was there to guide. Then He said, now that I'm leaving, your joy needs to be fulfilled in them. This is what the Lord Jesus wants to do because when you receive the Holy Spirit, you stop having questions about everything. You are secure in the knowledge that the maker, the creator of the world is with you. It's very common to see, um, we sometimes have people in the church who are very, they, they have questions about everything. I have Pastor Gladson here with us. Good evening, Pastor Gladson. Good evening, we, we sometimes have people in the church who have questions about everything. They have questions about heaven, about hell, about tithe, about baptism, about this, about... And, and in some cases, it's like the more questions we answer, the more questions the person has. And this is a, an unending thing. We will never answer all the questions that a person has. On the other hand, when the person receives the complete joy of the Holy Spirit that the Lord Jesus said, if we can put the second verse on the screen again, Jesus said, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. When you have the joy of the Lord Jesus fulfilled in yourself, the Holy Spirit that is inside of you, because think with me, when you go to the pastor to ask questions, the pastor answers your questions inspired by the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you have the same Spirit that speaks through the pastor to answer your questions. Therefore, you no longer have questions. Sometimes when a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, they say, Pastor, I don't know what I choose. Do I get married to this person or I don't? Do I choose this career or I, I don't? When you receive the Holy Spirit, you have the guide inside of you. The guidance the pastor comes to speak to you, to give you. The Spirit that he has inside of him is inside of you. And that's not to say that you may never need advice, because we do. 
even I sometimes may need to go for advice, but that goes in terms of experience. But when a person has the spirit of complete joy, Pastor Gladstone, that is the spirit of God, then the Lord Jesus lives inside of them. That person is finally complete. Until then, something is always missing. But when the Lord Jesus is there through the baptism with the Holy Spirit, He may not be physically in the world anymore. Like He said, now I'm leaving this world. But the Holy Spirit inside the person makes them to be secure. You don't have a person who is up and down anymore, inconsistent, like a roller coaster of faith, a person who one day walks in the church smiling, another day walks in the church crying. It's, I hope we're not going to offend anybody, but we can say like this, that a person without the Holy Spirit is like someone who is bipolar. You never know what you're going to get. One day you may get someone who walks into the church ecstatic. The next day you, walk, you see someone walk into the church Pastor, I want to leave the church. That happens a lot, right, Pastor Glass? And we see the Holy Spirit in a person, Bishop, through their decisions and choices. Because when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is able to teach us all things. He gives us the spirit yes. of discernment. He, actually, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide you to all truth. He teaches us everything. Yeah. He's the teacher. And it's impossible for us to have the Holy Spirit and for us to be lost up and down constantly. It's impossible. When we, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have that assurance and also that peace inside of us that only the Holy Spirit can give. And He supply all our needs the same way that Jesus did with the disciples. Now, we, we're, we're only going to start the fast of Daniel on Monday, but we are now in the week of purification. Now, I want to open the phone lines and, but, but here's why I want to open the phone lines, and this is why I didn't ask you to call before. We're going to put a couple of questions there on the, on the, on the screen. Can, can you please put the first question there? If you identify yourself with one of these questions, you can call. Number one, how has been your experience with the week of purification? So, for example, you, we, we, we were saying, leave, leave the question there, please, Pastor. You, we were saying from last week, don't wait for the fast of Daniel. If you notice that you need, there, there's something rooted inside of you, perhaps not a sin, but something, a pride, uh, someone you need to ask forgiveness, something you noticed about yourself, a selfishness, I don't know. And maybe in this week of purification, God spoke to you. Let us know. If it is not something that private, if you don't mind sharing, because sometimes what God revealed to you and you speak about your experience, someone who's listening will also say, wow, actually, that's, that's me. So you who had an experience in this week of purification that God showed you, and maybe you're already working on that, 020-8051-2222. The next question, has God revealed something to you that you hadn't noticed before? We have some questions, uh, some uh, calls coming in already and we're going to speak to this person who called. Let's see. Hi, good evening. That you need. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear us? Hello? Yes. Hi. Good evening. Good evening, Bishop. Hi. It's, who am I speaking to? It's Bruna and Gregoria from Manchester. Hi, Bruna. All the way from Manchester. Good evening. Please, now you, oh, you can put this, the screen there for people to see us. So, did God reveal something to you, Bruna, in this week of purification, something that was important for you to change? Um, yes, so I think that the 21 days is coming at a good time um, because at times it's very easy to become distracted, um, especially as well, like if you um, already have the Holy Spirit and you're serving God, it can be distract. Um, it can be easy as well to get distracted, you know, 
the responsibilities that you have. Um, so I'm going to take the 21 days to really invest in my personal and um, relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So what he showed you is that maybe you were allowing certain distractions to happen in your life. Yeah. Okay. Amen. So take what he showed you and invest in preparing yourself for this fast of Daniel, okay? Thank you, Bishop. Amen. May God bless you and Pastor Oliveira there in Manchester. We have another call. Uh, good evening. Who am I speaking to? Good evening, Bishop. My name's Maya. I'm from FPK. Maya from Finsbury Park. Good evening. Maya, what has God uh, revealed to you in this week of purification that is necessary for you to, to change, to purify yourself from? So something that um, I was going to answer the second question, something that God showed me that I just haven't seen before is that I was having my moment with him today and he showed me that it's usually me focusing on what's wrong with me instead of looking to God. So it's always about my mistakes. It's always about, you know, my doubts. It's always mm -hmm. about my fears. But I never make him like the bigger picture, if that makes sense. I always focus on the things inside of me instead of, you know, looking to him and what he says and what he wants from me. You know, I just had this really great experience today. So are you saying that you, you would end up putting yourself down a lot instead of trusting, yeah. trusting his promises? Yeah, I would always look at everything that was wrong with me, everything that was basically going on wrong mm -hmm. with me, instead of looking at his word, looking at what he wants in my life, basically. Amen. Amen. And I believe, my, thank you very much, by the way. God bless you, okay? We'll see you tomorrow in the church. What time are you coming tomorrow for the service? 7.30. 7.30. I'll see you in the evening, okay? God bless you. Uh, Pastor Joseph, and I want to leave the, the, the telephone line for us to take maybe a couple of more calls. You can call 020-8051-2980. Oh, two, oh, oh, please. Yeah, it's there on the screen. Good. 020-8051-2980. Oh, oh, this thing that Maya said, Pastor Joseph, is very... I, I think a lot of times people don't understand how much of a problem this is because okay we need to purify ourselves but sometimes the person the problem is that they put themselves down a lot you don't deserve the holy spirit because you did this because you said that because you, you know you, you you failed before and at some point we have to believe the promises of god that say no, but I, I, I understand you are flawed, you have mistakes, but still I want to live in you. The Holy Spirit doesn't come to live in us because we are perfect. He comes if, when there is sincerity. It, it, it was, I was thinking about the passage where the Bible says that God, He completes us. So God can complete us, but if we, we cannot put ourselves down. So many, many things will come on the way that the devil try also to bring thoughts, say you can never, this will never happen. Even the moment they are sick, the Holy Spirit. So they have to believe that God can set them free. God can completely them. And that's the reason why tomorrow they, they'll put their sackcloth on. Mm -hmm. They come with sincerity. They come with their heart open. Say, God, I want to be, I want to be free. Mm -hmm. God can set so many free. God can set someone, maybe Cain. There, there is no limits. I, I was thinking, Bishop, the person can come in the church new, but come want to change. It can happen. Why not? Mm -hmm. God just looking for someone that have their, their life open. Their heart is open to receive this total deliverance. God is not looking for perfection. Per yeah. Perfection is looking for someone who want to change. That's right. We have another couple of calls. Let's see if we can speak at least to these two more calls before the prayer. Uh, hello, good evening. Hello. Hi, good evening. Who am I speaking to? Hello, it's Rihanna from Finsbury Park. Hi, Rihanna from Finsbury Park. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Bishop. Good. Rihanna, has God shown you something in this week of purification that is important for you to, to purify yourself from? Um, yes, definitely. Um, so what God has been showing me is that um, basically how I should be given more. I think as of lately, I kind of feel like I've slowed down, especially into giving to other people. 
um, a lot of the time kind of I get distracted with work and the things that I need to do and it it's it's kind of made me so uncomfortable but in a good way mm-hmm. so God has been showing me that um, I need to give more and stop focusing on myself and my well-being and kind of thinking um, about everything is about me and think about other people who are suffering even though I still have a long way to go um, I still have something to give to somebody so I should be given that Amen. And do you have your sackcloth ready for tomorrow? Um, yes, I do. Good. Amen. God bless you, Rian. Okay? Okay. Amen. Bye, Bishop. And uh, before we take the, the, the final call that's there on the line, we'll speak to you in just a moment. Uh, what Rihanna was saying, Pastor Joseph, Pastor Glanson, this is the importance of the evangelism for Good Friday. She was saying there, God showed her the importance of giving more of herself. And what better way is that to give than to save a soul. Yes, and, and the, it's important Bishop, because when we, when we give, that's when we receive. And our intensity in our giving will show to God how much we, we really desire Him. That's right. Let's take the final call because we'll be going for the prayer in just a moment. Uh, good evening. Good evening Bishop, it's Lorraine. Hi Lorraine, where, where are you calling us from? Mighty Boring. Mighty bullring. I, I could sense uh, a brommy twang in your accent. <laughs> yes. Lorraine, wh- what has God showed you in this week of purification as you prepare for the fast of Daniel? Yeah, it showed me that the more I draw close to God, um, the more obviously I'm going through hardships and battles and trials and tribulations on my journey of faith. So what He's showing me is that not to look at my situation to keep my eye focused on Jesus Mm -hmm. and just to like he advised me to keep feeding his sheep serving him and not look at my look at my problems because when I'm taking my eye off Jesus then obviously obviously I'm I'm not pleasing him so he showed me to obey as obedience is better than sacrifice so it's really showed me that I just have to keep serving him trusting him and obeying in his word and that means taking action upon what he's telling me to do are you are you an assistant? Not yet. But you you are part of the battalion group there. I am yes. Okay, so God is showing you that instead of w- worrying about your problems, your world, focus on serving Him, right? Yes, feeding His sheep, Pastor. Amen. Bishop. That's it. Do you have your sackcloth ready for tomorrow? I do. Yes. Good. Amen. God bless you and God bless the service tomorrow day in Bullring. Okay. Okay, God bless. Thank you for calling. Uh, unfortunately, we can't take any more calls. We have uh, people waiting on the line, but we're going to go for the prayer. And just before we pray, there's one more thing I want to say. We, we have the sackcloth ready for tomorrow, but we must have also the mentality ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow cannot be one more, one more service, one more Wednesday, one more seeking of the Holy Spirit. In, in fact, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was talking to the pastors today. We're not going to be worried about the clock tomorrow, okay? I, I don't. I know what time the service is going to start. I don't know what time it's going to finish. We we're not going to be really worried about uh, a schedule, and that's not to say the service will finish at ten o'clock. Of course not. But you have to be there in the service with only one concern: to tear your heart, tear your old life, and. To come to God with humility. That sackcloth has to mean humility. And Sunday, which will be Palm Sunday by the way, we are going to present on the altar a special offering. And we were explaining on Sunday that the offering represents me. And the Bible says that the temple, the altar, sanctifies the offering. When I present my offering, on the altar, that offering that is representative of me, the altar purifies me. Because the altar purifies the offering. And if that offering represents me, then the altar purifies me. We will complete this week of purification now on Sunday. So prepare an offering that symbolizes you. If you want to throw yourself completely totally on the altar, let your offering reflect that. 
so that you can start the fast of Daniel the week or, or the day after saying, my God, here I am. Fill me with your spirit. Like it says there, Jesus, can, can we put the, 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 the second verse there? Jesus said, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to Him now. My God, together with us right now, they are people, my God, that they are humble themselves, my God, before you, before your throne. And this action that they are taking right now, my Father, it's because they truly desire your presence. In them, there is nothing that they desire more than to receive you, Father, so that their life can be complete so that they are able, my Father, to say that they have this joy, the joy that you promised. So Holy Spirit, come, my God, and work in us. These people that this week, they are purifying themselves. They are preparing themselves, my Father, for Monday. When they start the fast of Daniel, my God, your presence, your spirit, my God, you come upon them, actually, Father, we don't even need to wait for Monday. Your presence can come upon them now. Those, my God, who are sincere, those who genuinely, my God, they desire your presence. So, Father, fill them now with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen them. Those who are praying with us and they are feeling down, they are feeling weak, they are feeling discouraged. My God, come right now to reassure in them, my God, that you are with them. Holy Spirit, we surrender, my God, our life. We surrender our everything into your hands. And Father, we take this opportunity to pray for the service tomorrow, my God. When we come wearing our sackcloth, my God, we humble ourselves. My God, it will be a day that we will never forget. Because it will be a day where your spirit will come upon them. Father, I surrender the life of all of them into your hands. And I know that you're looking after all of them, my God. This is exactly what I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I am sure that God has heard our prayer. Now, if for any reason tomorrow you cannot attend the evening service, by all means, come in the morning, 7 or 10 or 3, and it will be the same spirit. If you can, do try to come in the evening because sometimes you come in the afternoon, you, then you need to rush to work, morning the same thing. And I tell you, in the evening we're not going to be worried with time because we are going to immerse ourselves in humbling ourselves before God. All right? May God bless you abundantly. Tomorrow we are going to continue here with the understanding of John 17. We'll be giving more opportunity for uh, you to call and take part of the program. Bye-bye.